Hey everyone, so recently College Board released four new Blue Book practice exams for the SAT. You know what that means, new SAT concepts and difficult SAT problems you need to know for the upcoming SAT. Okay, so I went through and you know, I saw a lot of the questions were either too easy or repeats of the old SAT concepts. And so in this video, I decided to pick out three of the most useful and difficult quote unquote questions uh, that you need to know for the upcoming SAT. And these are not just exact copies of the questions I went through and I went through the effort of creating these questions so that they emulated the same concepts and maybe some wording here and there of the SAT questions in the practice test. But these are not exact copies, so you can watch the entire video. You won't spoil anything if you are planning on doing the practice test in the future. All right, let's get into it. So this one is similar to a question from Blue Book practice test number seven. It says a right circular cone has a slant height of 97 centimeters and the area of its base is 5,329 pi square centimeters. What is the volume of the cone in cubic centimeters? Okay, let me switch colors here. Okay, so what is the first plan of action? Well, we're given a couple of things. We're given the slant height. So you might be wondering, what is the slant height? Well, I have a nice diagram here. You can see, oh God, green does not show up well there. Um, I'm changing my colors to pink. So this right here, this L label is the slant height, okay? So your actual height is this, right? H, that is just the actual height. But your slant height is referring to this value out here. You'll recognize that the slant height actually makes a right triangle with the height and the radius. And so we're going to utilize that uh, to find a couple values in the future. But the first thing I want to do is actually find the radius, right? Because currently we don't know the radius, but it's pretty easy to find. Uh, so the base area which is given is equivalent to the pi times r squared. So what is the base area? Well, it's given right here as 5,329 times pi squared centimeters. So 5,329 pi equals pi r squared, so r squared. So now, how do we find r? Well, we just isolate and solve for r. So in this case, r will be equivalent to 73 centimeters always have your units just to be cool. All right, so now we can actually utilize this right triangle, I guess, relationship. Um, so we know the, oh God, I have to change back to pink. So we know the radius, right? Our radius here is 73. Our height is a unknown. So that's what we're trying to solve for. And we know our slant height is given as 97 and we refer to the slant height as just this L right here. So that is 97. So now we can use the Pythagorean theorem a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So let's set that up. So if you want to write this as an expression, it'd be length equals r squared plus h squared. So this is not actually the length, that's the slant height. Um, but we know the slant height, which is 97. So 97 squared equals, I guess if we take the square root, we should deny squared this side. So r make that 73 squared plus height squared. All right, so if you subtract 73 squared from 97 squared and take the square of both sides, we're gonna get the uh, height, oh, if you'll let me write it, height equals square root of 4,080, which gives us 64 centimeters as the height. Okay, so now we have the radius and now we have the height. What do we do from here? Well, we just use one last formula, which is the uh, volume of the cone. So the volume of a cone is equivalent to one third times pi yeah, times pi r squared times height. And so now it's pretty easy to find the volume because we know the we know the radius, which we found, and we know the height, which we found here. So one third times pi times r, which is seventy three. Square that times h, the height, 64. Oh boy, it's starting to look like some weird symbols over here. But all this is going to be approximately equal to 113,685.333 pi. And so we get a decimal, but of the answer choices we have, it lines up pretty nicely with answer choice C. And so that is our answer for that one. All right, let's move on to the next question. So this one is similar to a blue book practice question from the practice test 10. This one's pretty interesting. 
It says the triangle ABC and XYZ are graphed in the XY plane. Uh, triangle ABC has vertices AB and C at 3, 2, 3, 6, and 7, 2. Respectively, triangle XYZ has vertices at XYZ at 3, 2, 3, 6 plus M and 7 plus M2, respectively, where M is a positive constant. If the measure of angle B is S degrees, what is the measure of angle Z? Oh boy, a lot of uh, variables going here. So let's just, you know, draw a diagram. The diagrams really help us solve problems. So all these coordinates right here are on a positive, on the positive X, Y uh, plane. So like the first quadrant. So let's say this is our plane and then 3, 2 is uh, like right there. So that's A. And then 3, 6, I don't know, it's like up here somewhere. We don't need to be totally accurate because we just need to recognize a pattern, all right? And 7, 2 is like out here aligned with A. Okay, and that's C. So we make a nice right triangle, okay? So what do we need to find, right? Well, this is actually interesting because you'll see that A, the coordinates of A are 3, 2. So I should probably label that 3, 2. Coordinates of B are 3, 6, 3, 6. And so we can actually find the side length of the triangle. So from uh, 3, 2 to 3, 6, that's an uh, increase of 4 units. So that's a side length of 4. And then C here is 7, 2. And so the uh, side length of this side is also 4 because 7 minus 3 is 4. And so, interesting enough, we have an isosceles triangle. Okay, so we have a right triangle, right, because these, uh, these lines line... I don't know what to call it, AB and AC, they're perpendicular. And so we can call these both angles 45 degrees. And funnily enough, it says if the measure of angle B is S degrees, blah, 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 what is the measure of angle Z? Well, we just found the measure of angle B, 45 degrees. So 45 degrees must be equal to S. But that's just only one variable because we have to find angle Z in terms of S or M, which I don't know if we can find. But let's do the same thing that we just did for all this mumbo jumbo for XYZ. So triangle XYZ looks like it's the same coordinates except there's a variable. So we have 3, 2. So let's go to X, 3, 2. And then we're going to have 3. So it's on the same Y plane thing. And then 6 plus M. Okay, so that's interesting. So we don't actually know where the Y value is. So I'm just going to place it somewhere. Let's call it there. Let's call this 3, 6 plus M. And the reason I'm doing this is because there's another relationship, as you'll see later. So then we have the last coordinate is 7 plus M, too. So very similar to this last coordinate as well. So it's somewhere out here. So that's 7, uh, sorry, oops, plus M, comma 2. And so we make another right triangle. We don't actually know the length of it because we don't know the length or the value of M. But we, what we can do is find a relationship because M is existent in both of these side lengths, right? So if we were to find the side length of this right here, what would that be? Well, it would be 4 plus M. So let me erase this. 4, because when we went from 3 to 6 plus M, if you add 4 plus M to that, you get 6 plus m. So 4 plus m is our side length there. We get the exact same thing for this side length, which is also 4 plus m. Because 2 plus 4 plus, oh, sorry, if you have 3 plus 4 plus m, wait, that's hard to say, 3 plus 4 plus m equals 7 plus m. There we go. And so because these two side lengths are equal, we have another isosceles triangle. So this, we talked about before, the perpendicular lines, 90 degrees. This must be 45. This must be 45. And so, uh, what is this? Blah, 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 respectively, where M is a positive constant. Okay, so M is a positive constant. That makes sense in that case. What is the measure of angle Z? What is Z? So Z looks like is the third coordinate. So it is this one right here. So what is the angle of that? Well, we just labeled it as 45 degrees, right? So 45 degrees. And so which one of these answer choices gives us 45 degrees? We know S is 45 degrees, and so we just plug in 45 for S and one of these answer choices and get the answer. Well, we don't know what M is, right? We don't know what that is. But in answer choice C, we got 90 minus S. S is 45, 90 minus 45 is 45. We know Z is 45, 
So C happens to be our answer again. So that's our correct answer. Similar to a question from Blue Book practice test number nine. It says a quadratic equation H miles of depth in meters below the surface of the water of a dolphin T minutes after the dolphin entered the water during a dive. The function estimates that the dolphin reached a maximum depth of 250 meters five minutes after it entered the water. Then it reached the surface of the water 10 minutes after it entered the water. Uh, based on these properties, that's a weird way to refer to it, what was the estimated depth to the nearest meter of the dolphin eight minutes after it entered the water? To solve this problem, I'm not going to waste our time here. Let's just abuse Desmos because we love Desmos, right? On the digital SAT, just use Desmos, guys. So how exactly do we solve it with Desmos? Well, you input it as a table, right? And we have our two coordinate points, 5, 250, as referred to here, because it said the maximum depth is 250 meters five minutes after it entered the water. Okay, that's cool. And then we have 10, 0, because it said that uh, was it was like 10 minutes after it uh, entered the water, it reached the surface, right? So if the surface, we can infer that that's 0 meters there. Um, so we have our two coordinate points. We set up our regression, as you know. And the one thing we do have to do here is actually set a restriction on this regression where we say h equals 5 and k equals 250, right? So we're giving a value for h, we're giving a value for k here. And the reason we're doing that is because we know it's the vertex because the dolphin reached the maximum depth, 250 meters, five minutes after entering the water. And so we know those values, right? The maximum depth, if you think about a parabola, right? So assuming the dolphin dies, dies downward below the surface, right? The parabola is going to look like this, right? So then if you have a maximum depth, it's going to be somewhere there. And so, you know, the maximum point of our parabola there is our vertex, right? And so because we set these domain restrictions now, I wouldn't call them domain restrictions, honestly. But anyways, now that we have those in, we have a proper regression that we can simply just find the intersection where x equals eight, right? Because x in our case here is just the number of minutes. And so our corresponding y value is, I, I forgot the variable, the nearest meter that the dolphin is actually at. So eight minutes in, the dolphin is at 160 meters. And so that does it for the video, guys. If you learned something, make sure you subscribe. And yeah, uh, we have more videos coming soon, so you definitely don't want to miss that. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. I need to get some sleep, and yeah, bye.